Hi everyone, I'm Anastasia and with me today is Vali Little, one of Australia's most loved cooks. Um, and you probably know her from Delicious Magazine, she was the former food editor. So thanks for coming to Booktopia today, Vali. It's my pleasure. <laughs> now before we get started on your new book, I just wanted to, to say something. So I'm a big Pinterest fan. The social yeah. town Pinterest, and I have multiple boards dedicated to you know just food and food styling and food photography. And when I saw your book, it was as if my Pinterest account just came to life. <laughs> it's like all my favorite you know photography and recipes in one book. So thank you for putting this together. Oh well, well that's a great compliment to have. It it's is. wonderful. I, look, I'm I'm really truly blessed because. Um, I get to work with an amazing team on these books. I have a, a great stylist, and I think we worked it out that um, this book is our eighth book we've done together. Wonderful photographer, and for me, you know, a great cookbook has beautiful pictures that inspire you before you even start looking at the recipes. So, Definitely. yeah. My mum's a cook, and I gave her a book the other day, and it had no images in it. She told me to take it back. <laughs> Did she? The images. <laughs> They yeah. make a whole lot of difference. I know. Yeah. Look, I, I feel the same way. I, um, you know, I think there are books, you know, like Stephanie Alexander's Cook's Companion, which are, yeah. you know, classic books and don't really need, um, you know, pictures in them. But, you know, for, for a book that's practical that you want to cook from all the time, I think you've got to have that picture. You do. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Well, this is the, the first book that I've done outside of the Delicious Banner. So I'm still involved in the magazine after um, 15 years. I, I still write my monthly feature for them. Um, but I'm now doing um, freelance work as well. Um, and HarperCollins, um, my publisher, you know, are very supportive and... Um, um, you know, came to me and said that you know they would like to do um, another book with me. They've published all all my books um, in the past, and um, look, I just wanted it to be a, a book that people want to cook from. I love it when people stop me and say to me, you know, oh, I I still cook, you know, your your salmon recipe every Christmas, and so you know, new and interesting ideas. You know, trying to sort of keep it. Um, um, what's the term, on trend I suppose but also, you know making it accessible and practical for people Yeah. yeah. So you were born into a family of restaurateurs, right? Yeah. Do you think you were groomed from a young age to kind of work well, in this I, Look, I don't think groomed, my parents never ever forced me to get into food, but you know, food was just such a big part of our life when I was growing up and, you know sort of them having a restaurant I got to sort of meet chefs all the time and taste interesting things so I think that was the start of it all and then um, you know when I left school I, I sort of really didn't know what, what, what to do and I thought you know cooking is something you can always go, go back to and so that's when I enrolled at the Cordon Bleu School in London and tra trained with them and, you know, once I'd done that, um, I think I was hooked, really. But I've, done, I've worked in all different facets of the food industry and, in, you know, management um, and, um, uh, you know, even, you know, waitressing. But just, um, you know, to, to get a feel fit for every, every part of the industry, yeah. In your book, you mentioned that you've collected... Was it over 800 cookbooks 800. in your lifetime? Yeah. When did this start? <laughs> or do you remember the first one you ever kind of held or bought or um, loved? Look, I suppose, I mean, uh, there were always cookbooks around, but, you know, sort of the cookbooks of the 60s and 70s weren't something that you really wanted to make a collection out of. The photography was terrible, you know, everything was overpropped and some of the recipes were a bit crazy. But I think um, one of the first books that, um, that um, I, I remember and I still have it was um, the first Marie Claire cookbook that came out in England and it was written by Nigel Slater who's one of my favourite food writers 
and um, I still cook recipes from that, that book today. So, yeah, I mean, and, you know, some of them go back a long, long time, and I just, you know, love going back, reading some of the recipes, still getting ideas from them. Yeah. So I was going to say, you've had quite a lot of praise for this book. So, for example, Matt Preston yeah. has come out and he says, he said, whose recipes do I cook at home other than my own? Well, over the last 14 years, I have cooked way more of Vala Littles than anyone else's. They always, always work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I was about to ask you, who's, you know, which chef do you kind of always you know, turn to, and so you've mentioned Nigel Slater. Mm. Anyone else? Uh, look, um, I mean, I think Nigel Slater, for, for me, I love um, a recipe, and I've tried to do that as much as possible with this book, to give a little bit of a story um, as an introduction to each recipe, because I think that sort of sets the scene for people and, you know gives you an idea where, what inspired you to write it. And Nigel Slater is the absolute master of that. Um, and um, so, look, I, I love him. Um, I think, you know, I, I like people like Hugh Fairly Winning Stall, his recipes. Um, I mean, he's written so many different books. R really, I was looking at his vegetable book the other day, and, you know, that's a great book, really interesting ideas. Um, I like I like Annabelle Langbane, you know, the New Zealand food writer. I mean, they're sort of my my style of co cooking. So, you know, something that's interesting, but something that's achievable too. Yeah. So, if you had the opportunity to cook for someone on a Saturday night, who would you love <laughs> to have over at your house to cook for? Well. Um, <laughs> Look, I've always said, I don't know, I mean, he's really getting on these days, but I still think he'd be the most amazing dinner guest. I'd love to have David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough. But, you know, he must have tasted some amazing food in all the travels that he's done. So I don't know, yeah. I'd probably have to cook some sort of wild beast for him or something. So, <laughs> But he's always been on my dinner party list. Um, and, um, look... I don't know, just someone... I'm really lucky because my friends know when they come to our house now that more often than not I'm testing a recipe, so they're going to be guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that. I mean, I, I'm fortunate that I've got a kitchen where everyone can stand around and, you know, stir a pot and get involved. And that, to me, you know, m makes it re really special. Yeah. Because food is, it's not just about, you know, one person cooking and delivering food. It is very much sort of a, a group community. Yeah, I thing, think so. Yeah. And I think it's great that these days, you know, homes are designed like that, where the kitchen really is, you know, the hub of the home, and everyone can get involved. Whereas before it used to be like a little narrow corridor and poor mum was stuck out there turning out the food. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have um, a flick test. You mentioned a flick test yes, yes. in the book. Um, and I, think, I thought that was a, it's a, little, it's a great piece of advice for people. Do you want to explain this little flick test for Well, guys? look... Um, it's all about, I mean, because I've owned so many cookbooks and I, I am drawn to bookshops all the time. Um, so when I go in and I'm looking for a new cookbook, I start at the back of the book and flick through it. And if I don't see five, at least five recipes or images that I think, wow, I really want to cook that, then it goes back on the shelf. It doesn't pass, pass muster and so... Yeah, I have to find find another book. So that's that's the flick test. Yeah. Yes, it's a good piece of advice for anyone out there. Uh, look, I mean, you don't want to spend your money on something that. No, that's that's right. And you know, sometimes you get home with with a new book. It might have the most amazing cover, mm -hmm. but then you get home and you think, oh, I don't know if I'll actually cook anything from this. Yeah. So there's got to be at least five things that stand out. At least five. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, on uh, page 58, there is a rather handsome-looking man. <laughs> Can you explain who that is? That's my son Henry. Mm -hmm. So um, Henry came and assisted on our photo shoot, and um, 
um, helping me in the kitchen. And yeah, he's a gorgeous young man. So we roped him in to have his picture picture taken, a little reluctantly, but um, yeah. He's gonna be a star now. I you think so. That? Absolutely. <laughs> He'll want his own book. <laughs> Look, but, uh, both of them cook, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, both of them lo love food and they've, they've grown up as, you know, being guinea pigs for me as well and that's really interesting because your sons are brutally honest with you so if there's a recipe, you know, that they're not quite sure about, they'll say to me, no, but bin that one mum, don't put that in the book, so it's good, it's good to have that, but yeah, healthy food they like, they're very into healthy food. You mentioned my book because you are such a good cook. They actually don't want to leave home. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> so my 32-year-old has left home. Okay. I mean, they've Since the publishing of this book. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Henry, the youngest, is with us now. I mean, he's lived overseas and um, he lived up in Byron Bay for, for quite a long time. He's come back home now, but only, you know, until he um, he's had enough of my food and he can move on. <laughs> There was only one recipe that you wanted people to cook from this book. Mm. One that they had to had to make this weekend. Right. One or something that kind of encapsulates what this book is about. Right. You can have a flip through. And well, look, I, I think I know every recipe in there. Yeah. Um, I think for a dessert, the cover recipe to me is fantastic because it is so simple. It's an ice cream cake. You um, uh, you don't even have to make the pastry for, for it. It's just a crumb crust, but it always impresses. It's really delicious. So um, I think from a sweet point of view, I love that. From a savoury point of view, um, gosh, there's lots lots in there. I think for me, I love the home smoked salmon. Um, which is really delicious and I wanted to put that in there to show people that it's not difficult to smoke something at home and that um, you know it, it's very achievable and get, gives you a delicious res result in the end so I think um, maybe those two are my favourites. <laughs> there we go. Um, and just lastly what's next for you? Well, uh, well another book so um, um, which I'm working on at the moment. We haven't quite decided what it will be called, but um, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun putting the initial ideas together um, and then quite a bit of travel and I get a lot of my inspiration from traveling. So I've got a few trips on the cards um, a bit later in the year. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So. I'll just grab that Yeah. <laughs> Marley, thank you so much for coming into Booktopia. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. If you are interested in Bali's new book, um, head on over to Booktopia. To head on over to Booktopia to com um, David Attenborough, if you're listening, uh, yeah. call Bali. Yeah. And uh, Henry and Toby, I am so sorry if I embarrassed you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. Thanks. <laughs>